Now, for a bit of a background story, let me start with this. I am not human. I am, as far as I know, a spirit. A demon, some would call me. I suppose they would be correct. My scorched, charred, grey, scaly skin and my retractable talons, my black, leathery wings took me to the skies of my infernal home. I am not evil, however. Let me explain from the beginning, as most stories do. I was there when the earth was nothing more than an orb of molten rock and a fiery, hellish sea. I will be there when the earth, and all around it, becomes a void of nothingness, from which not even light will escape. I was there when you were not, and I will be there long after you will not. I am eternal. I am immortal. But I had no purpose. No reason for my existence. Why did I live? Why was I born? Why do I exist? I just did. But that was not enough. I decided, if I had no purpose, I would make my own. I gathered my strength over millennia, drew from the powers of my realm. I studied primordial magic, spent centuries clawing through the ancient tomes. I bathed in the sacred rivers, even as they clawed at my skin and drowned me in despair. Even as the Phlegathon boiled my skin, even as the creatures that swam amongst the river Lithae threatened to wipe my entire identity away, I persevered. The others laughed at me, they mocked me, insulted me, but I shunned them. I continued to gather strength, studied harder until I isolated myself from the entire world. The only thing that mattered was my goal. To walk amongst humans, and finally, find a purpose. I found that purpose in the period you mortals would call the 1900s. Time had no meaning to the demons, nor to the angels. They had no use for it. It was hard for me to adjust, not to mention understand and perfect my understanding of the language and culture of your world. But once I did, it seemed more beautiful more stunning and radiant than ever. But I could not walk among you forever. My power had grown extensively, and it was that strength that allowed me to swim up towards the surface of the Acheron and walk past the veil. It was only that strength that forbid me from staying for long. In a few months, my body would fail. At best, I had two years. First, my eyes would begin to take on their original shape, a furnace of fire, as red as blood. Then, later on, my hair would fall apart, breaking off in clumps. My skin would grey until they were the color of stone, and I would begin to feel a craving for raw flesh. Even if I resisted, the affliction would continue. My talons would begin to emerge. And finally, my full power would return in droves, reducing my host to ash. They would be burnt from the interior of their flesh. It was horrendous to watch, but I had no choice. I could not walk in my original form. Human hosts were my only choice, my only chance to find some meaning in my life. Soon, as the journey to the mortal realm became more frequent, I found it in the form of a boy. He was kind and gentle, confident, albeit sometimes a bit too much. He was a fire, warming and comforting, yet with enough fuel, he could burn everything down to get what he wanted. He was fun, the kind of fun that left you with no regrets, only consequences. God had no laws against us, in fact, Contrary to what you humans believe, he was no harsh overlord. He was cold, distant, and allowed angels and demons alike to do as they pleased with mortals, uh, with exceptions of course, but I could not stay with him forever, much to my great sadness. 
I knew that I could not bear to part with him, so I refused to. I told him what I was. He was disturbed, but in time, he learned to love me. He loved me, and I finally found the purpose I so badly wanted. To be loved so much as I was in those fleeting moments. It was happiness. It was life. It was when I had found yet another host. I had used my power in conjunction with the water of the Acheron, as I always did, in order to calibrate it to find Leo. I had already found a host and plotted his route towards my lover. He was close enough now. No one knew him. He was new to the neighborhood, extensively, and had no family. A perfect host. I used the key I always used to enter his apartment and looked around. I smirked before grabbing a glass goblet on his table. I liked to scare him sometimes. We both always ended up rolling on the mat in laughter though, no matter what. I knew he was probably expecting me. If he was home, that is. I nailed deeply, calling upon my powers. It was a risk. Invoking my dark magic would take away the precious time I had on Earth. But this would be quick and was worth only a few seconds, not too much. My magic coiled and snagged throughout the apartment like mist, slowly filling the place. The scent of fire filled the air, and I knew that he was not inside. I sighed before hopping onto the couch. He was probably at work, saving lives and cutting into people's lungs. It was a nasty job, I supposed, but someone had to do it. That was when I saw the news. My entire world turned dark in an instant. I could barely think as I sprinted through the hallways, ordering the doctors to let me see my beloved. I barged into his room. He was dead. Liam, my purpose, my beloved, was dead. I could not think straight. I could not do anything but watch as they carried him outside. I forced them to let me see him, just a little longer. Soon they left us entirely, and I finally let out all my anger, frustration and sadness. They said it was a car accident. Tears stung my cheeks, and then I noticed what he was wearing. It was a talisman, a necklace I had made for him. I had imbued it with an enchantment of protection. It should have protected him. I renewed the spell every time before I had to go. It had worked before. It should have worked now. Unless... It failed. I failed. I had not performed the spell correctly before the time came to leave. And it had cost me my lover. I wanted to scream, to drown in the river Lethe and forget everything, but I did no such thing, because I already had an entire plan in set. I would bring back my lover, and nothing, living nor dead, could stop me. I spent years studying the ancient texts I did before. I shunned the motor realm, barely ate, barely drank, barely slept. All that mattered was Liam. In five years, I finally found the power I needed. The power to traverse the two worlds, to find the third, the world of the dead. The geography of hell was strange, with arcane, twisting landscapes where danger lurked at every corner. Acheron was the barrier between the living and the demons. Anyone who wanted to enter the motor realm could, if they had enough power and host, swim toward the surface and find themselves on the other end. On the other hand, I had no idea of where the third world was, nor the veil that hid it. Demons could not die, nor could Angel. Little, if any, research was done to find it. But I did. Ley lines were geometrical lines that ran through the land of hell. 
same as in earth, and I suppose in heaven. I found the intersections of these lines, areas where magic abounded, and where the darkest spawn of my kind lurked, hoping to prey upon the strength of demons. We could not die, but that did not mean we were invincible. Our life came from our power. If sufficiently weakened, a demon could take millions of years to reform. Once they did, they would lose most of their magic, not to mention the respect of their people. Any wealth or status they once had would be accessible to anyone. Strength was the low here, and those without strength were nothing. What is the saying? The strong lead, the weak bleed. That was the entire basis of hell. Anyway, moving on. I found the intersections. It was not particularly difficult to traverse the veil. Ley lines could easily amplify a demon's strength. I hurled my power at the seams of reality. My muscles ached for release as I drew upon the magic within me, alongside the power of the line upon which I stood. I shuddered as I saw the world before me tear apart. I felt my wings rise, and I let it take me. When I awoke, I saw nothing. The world was black, with not a sliver of flight to be found. I was confused. Where were the people? That confusion was soon replaced by fear. While most of the texts agreed that there was some kind of a third world, some proposed the theory that there was nothing. If so, was this all for nothing? Had I held out hope? For nothing? Had I fallen in love? Had I shunned the entire world? Had I allowed the entire realm to go on without me? For nothing? No, I could not. I would not believe it. I refused to. But could I deny what was right in front of my eyes? Holy thoughts filled my mind, rushing through me in a flood of emotions too deep for me to name. I clenched my fists, and blood bathed my tongue in a desperate bit to keep myself from crying. I had to focus. Just because there was nothing there right now did not mean that there was nothing at all. Right? That was the only thing that kept me going. I continued to walk through the world. My wings folded neatly behind me. I tried to use my magic to create a flame, to allow for light. But for some reason, I could not create it. No, I could create fire, but it would not live. A spark, before being devoured by darkness. I shivered. In hell, heaven and earth, darkness was the absence of light. Here, darkness ate light. I continued to walk through the world. It seemed to go on for an eternity and I struggled to understand its logic. What creatures lurked here? Was there anything at all? The moment my questions were answered was the moment my entire life would change forever. A shadow began to form in the corner of my periphery, and I barely had a chance to turn around before feeling my wings being ripped away from me. I screamed, the entire realm shaking at my agony. From somewhere in the distance, disembodied laughter echoed throughout the fog of black. So, this world was inhabited after all. I held up my hands, attempting to create a shield. It barely held, falling apart the moment the creature touched its walls. What was this thing? It shrugged off every spell I threw at it without a glance at me. I ran not even bothering to try keep my hands in front of me. There was nothing in this world, nothing but that thing. I needed to get away from it. I could not see it, but that did not matter. I just knew that I had to get away from it. I knew that if it caught me, nothing would be able to save me. It had destroyed my shield within seconds. What other strange anomalies would I find within this world? A darkness that devoured fire and light, and creatures that could break apart any spell with only a touch. I could feel it gaining on me, feel it thrill at finally having something to hunt. 
That was when I could finally see the portal. I was surprised, but I had no time to stop. I sprinted, faster than ever, even as molten blood continued to splash onto the floor around me. They would grow back soon, I knew. But if I died, who knew what would happen? This world's lows were far different than those I was accustomed to. Here, the lows of science and magic held no powers. I barreled through the portal, and that was when I finally, in the light of my home, saw it. I do not have the heart to describe what it looked like. The image will forever remain carved into my mind. All I can say is, I hope I never see it again. I scrambled to close the portal, to shut it. The world stretched around me as I forced the fabric of reality back together. I sighed, and that was when I noticed a shadow. My eyes widened as I turned around, and my heart shattered. My fear increased thirteenfold. It was a man, but not any man I had seen before. It was handsome, or beautiful. Who knew? God took on many shapes. No one knew what it truly looked like. I knew this could only mean one thing. God barely, if ever, came down to hell. I knew that he had seen what had just transpired, and I knew that he would not forgive such a trespass. I cannot recall if there were, in truth, any laws against what had just occurred. But for what other reason could he have come? Right now, I have used my strength to assume another form and take on a new host. I have clothed myself using the best of the resources I have, but no one can hide from God forever. All I can do is hope that I have a little more time. I write this to you as a warning. I do not know what happened, but I am scared of what will happen to me if God finds me. He will punish me. He will destroy me. And what of that strange realm? What was that creature? And the most pressing question. What happens if it escapes? <laughs>